Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, my name is Jillian and I share videos about my spiritual journey, working with angel, oracle, and tarot cards, my yoga practice, and everything in between. So if you're interested in um, watching more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button, notification bell, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and share. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you a new deck that I picked up before Christmas. And it's actually not new in terms of being produced. It's a few years old, I think. But I actually found it at the flea market in Vancouver. I think it was at the end of November and I haven't opened it yet. So I decided, I'm like, I should just do an unboxing with you guys on the channel. And it's kind of ironic because it's the vintage wisdom oracle deck and I got it vintage. <laughs> so I got it at the flea market in uh, Vancouver, but it's sealed shut. So it's a brand new deck. So, um, yeah, so I wanted to do an unboxing of this deck today, share with this, this new Oracle deck with you guys. And then I also wanted to talk about, um, where I'm placing my energy as we move into 2022 in terms of, you know, creativity, reading, what deck I've been loving, working with, and just have like more of a kind of chatty video following the unboxing. So let me know in the comments, uh, below if you've ever worked with this deck, I was really drawn to it. I saw some uh, photos online. And it's, um, so it's by Victoria Mosley and I'm not sure what year it came out, but this is the, the mini version. So there's like a larger, um, version, but sometimes with decks, especially with Oracle decks, I like the minis because they're great to travel with. And, um, I don't know about this deck, but often they'll have the messages on the back. Like for example, here I have the mini version of the Isis Oracle. I love this deck and there's like the image and then the message on the back. So if you're looking for more of an Oracle with a simple to the point kind of message and you don't want to carry around a guidebook, if you're traveling or you just want something a little bit more simplistic, the mini versions of decks are a great way to go. But I will say that moving into this new year, I'm, I'm really not looking to add any more decks to my collection. I mean, we'll see if something like comes up and I'm like, ooh, I really wanna work with that, then I might change my mind. But I, I'm really happy with what I have at the moment. And um, I'm just trying to open this deck without opening it. And uh, you know, with the exception of this one, which I haven't opened yet, that I got before Christmas, I'm, you know, I'm focusing this year, I'd like to focus less on buying new decks and bringing new decks in and working on with what I have and um, yeah, I'm focusing more on creating and taking care of myself and, you know, my spiritual practice rather than, um, you know, buying a whole bunch of new decks. So that is the intention. So Vintage Wisdom Oracle. It's really cool. The artwork looks really cool. I, my first impressions, like when I saw the couple photos of it online before I came across it. It has this kind of like Victorian Gothic look to the art. Okay, so these are the backs to avoid the ring lights, you guys, because so there's a glare. Those are gorgeous backs, love it. Yeah, so it's like this sepia tone, okay. That's what I'm really liking about it too. The sepia tone, so peace. That's beautiful. Nature. So there's just one key word. There's no guidebook. So this could be a deck. If you're really looking to develop your intuition and, you know, connect with your guides, connect with your higher self, connect with your intuitive voice. It's a really nice way to sit with cards like this. Um, you know, and see what comes through intuitively, maybe do some journaling around the imagery, the symbolism, you know, cards speak a language. So, and when there isn't a guidebook, it's a nice way to kind of dive into your own understanding of the cards. Compassion. So yeah, it has this like Victorian kind of feel. Ooh, guardian angel. I like that one. Okay. 
And if you guys don't know, if you're new to my channel, I have a puppy, he's eight and a half months old. His name is Jake and he's in the background uh, going to town on his bone. <laughs> so if you hear a funny noise in the background, that's what's happening. That's beautiful. Yeah, I really like these. This so, so this deck could act as a really good clarifier for a tarot deck if you're doing a tarot reading for yourself or someone else and you need a clarifier. This I feel like could be a really great clar clarifying deck. Awakening. The imagery, imagery is beautiful. I'm getting like a really good, oh, I love this one, change. It's simplistic, but there's depth, if that makes sense. Like it's not too busy. I'm not gonna show all of the, oh, I love this one. I'm not going to show all of them. I'm going to, just in case you want to purchase this deck, I know you can buy this deck on Amazon. Again, this is the small or the mini version. I just want to see. Yeah, so it says 52 lavishly illustrated cards infused with the beauty and inspiration of goddesses, divas, and etheric muses. Rich in symbolic detail, these exquisite montages combine artfully blended images of French sepia photographs, wildflowers, nature totems and delicate vintage lace. So it says here that um, the larger edition comes with an 80 page guidebook. So that's an option as well. Love, and I'll just show you a few more. Patience. And we'll end with protection. Gorgeous deck. I mean, I love it. I love the photography. I love the images. I love the feel of it. Like it's I'm just trying to see if I have another card. So if we're talking about the mini version of the, um, the Isis Oracle, just see for size so I can show you guys. It's about the same size. It's a little wider than the Isis Oracle, the small version of the Isis Oracle. Um, it has a really nice cardstock. I don't know who it's printed by. It doesn't say on here, but um, it's a, it's more of like a matte cardstock. It is quite thin, but it has a nice feel. I'm such a tactile person. I love when my cards, especially when you work with cards for a living, you know, like just having that. I mean, these are perfect for me because I have smaller hands. So, yeah. I really like the way they shuffle too. It's just this really nice, um, soft feeling. Let's see if a card comes out. I'll pull one for us today. January 8th, 2022. What message do we need for today? This one wanted to come out. Ooh, centering. Yeah, so I'm feeling like this is a time, especially with all the planetary shifts that are happening at the moment, Venus being in retrograde in conjunct with Pluto. I spoke to my astrologist this week. Uh, there's a lot of things happening. Mer Mercury is going into retrograde in a week or two, I think. Um, I'm feeling like, yeah, centering, balance, taking that time to find balance within ourselves. So physically, you know, with something like yoga or meditation, um, and then also mentally, you know, slowing down and, and finding that balance, I feel like is going to be really important today and moving into the week ahead. So that is the centering card. I've been really into Vipassana meditation. I've just got into it very recently. I've downloaded the app dhamma.org. It's totally free. And you just do like a 10 minute breathing meditation where you essentially follow the sensations of the breath as they come in and out of your nostrils and it's guided. So it's really simple, even for the beginner. I'll try to remember to link it in the comment section below. If you're new to meditation or if you're an old time meditator, but you want to get back into it, the Vipassana app, you can do the Anapana 10 minute meditation morning and evening or whatever suits you, but it's a great way to get back into it. And for me, I find so much centering through meditation. So I felt the need to share that. So yeah, okay, so that is again, Vintage Wisdom Oracle. Yeah, really beautiful. Beautiful artwork. Again, I think it could work as a great clarifying deck 
or just a simple oracle deck for you to connect deeper to your intuition. You might want to do some journaling with it. Those are the backs once again. Okay. So given that it is the beginning of the year and, you know, I don't really make resolutions, but I, I kind of tend to, you know, take some time to center around what intentions I want to set, what I want to release, what I want more of in the upcoming year, what I want to focus on, um, rather than, you know, I'm going to do yoga every day for 30 minutes. It's a little bit less, it's a little bit more general for me where I like to set intentions moving forward. And one of the things that I have been thinking about lately that I sort of mentioned at the beginning of the video is less time buying and consuming and, you know, scrolling on Instagram or YouTube or whatever, and more time creating and taking care of myself and um, creating in various ways. So, um, and, and more time reading. That's another thing. I want to spend more time reading. So I wanted to share with you guys a couple of books that I just picked up that I've been getting into and really enjoying. And they are re related to what I share on this channel in terms of, you know, spirituality and divination and yoga. And so the first book that I just purchased last week, so I've just gotten into it, um, is A Witch Alone. And it is written by Marion Green. So if you're interested in exploring earth-based spirituality, how to connect with the God and the goddess, um, some, you know, how to connect with the cycles of the moon, how to connect with your intuition, I'm feeling like this is going to be a really great book for doing it on a more individual level, exploring your connection with earth-based spirituality as an individual rather than as part of a group like, you know, Wiccan or part of a coven or something like that. It's, um, it says the ultimate guide for the solo witch. And I'm just going to give you guys, there's some beautiful poetry at the beginning of this book, but I'll just show you the chapter breakdown if you are interested in this at all. So this is the chapter breakdown here. You can pause the video, but I'll just talk through it. So the first um, chapter is a new moon and a new dream. So getting connected to the cycles of the moon. The second one is meeting the goddess and the god of the witches. The third is the sacred cycles. The fourth is a circle between the worlds, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Plant power is one of them. Recovering ancient wisdom. So I literally am only on page 21. So I've just started it, but... I really like the way she writes. It's very relatable to me. It's a very, um, I feel like it's a broad read so you can really develop a personal practice as it relates to, you know, witchcraft or earth-based spirituality or whatever you feel called to if you're interested in divination or ritual. Um, yeah, there's a lot of exercises. So I am excited to um, delve more into this. So again, this is A Witch Alone. By Marianne Green. And I think she has some other books as well. Okay, so that's the first book that I'm reading. Then I also have this book that I, and this one, just if you're interested in Witch Alone, I actually got on Amazon. Yeah, got on Amazon. But so I have a local used bookstore like a block away from my house, which is really amazing because I always find gems at this little shop. I can't remember what it's called right now, but anyway. Um, and I was in there the other day and I actually wanted to pick up a book on astrology because I've been over the last couple years, I, you know, I got my needle chart done. I've been learning a lot more about astrology and integrating it into my reading practice and just my personal spiritual practice. So I was like, okay, I'm going to pick up another book on astrology. And then I ended up coming across this book by Angelo, I'm going to butcher the last name, Angelo Naseos. Anyway, it's called Tarot. Unlocking the Arcana. And I've read lots of books on tarot, but I haven't really found one where I'm like, this is, this is it. This is my tarot book. This is, I resonate with, you know, their perspective on the tarot. And, um, I mean, I feel like for me, tarot is a very much, of course, it's like a language of symbolism and divination. And there's a lot of symbology and things to uncover in the tarot in terms of archetypes, etc. But, my experiential meanings of the tarot don't always correlate with what people have written in books, but I'm feeling like with this book so far, when I reference some of the cards, 
I'm like, oh, this guy speaks my language. Like this guy gets the tarot in the way that I get the tarot. So whether you're completely new to the tarot or um, you're a seasoned reader, I feel like this book is definitely going to be worth the, worth the read. I haven't read the whole thing yet, but um, he has it broken down into like, you know, there's a whole introduction um, about, get, you know, selecting your deck. There's a history of the tarot keeping a journal. Um, there's a whole bunch of spreads. Um, and then he goes into obviously like all the card meanings, but he breaks them down into all the twos, all the threes, all the fours, which I think is interesting. So like, you know, two of cups, two of wands, etc. rather than doing all the suits separately, it's broken down, uh, by numbers instead, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just, I like his approach. I like, it's really cool when he goes into the major arcana, he has like a quote for each card. So for example, like the hanged man. And so based on my birthday, my tarot card, I'm in the year of the hanged man. So I've been kind of diving into that a little bit more and you can calculate your tarot card of the year. Um, I'll try to remember to put it in the description below, but essentially it's like you break down your birthday and then the, um, the year. No, wait, you write down your birthday. Anyway, I'll put it in the description below because you can calculate what your tarot card for the year is. And this year, my tarot card for the year based on my birth date is the hanged man. And so the quote here he has is the important thing is, sorry, <laughs> it's the important thing is this to be able at any moment to sacrifice what we are for what we could become, which I was like, Oh, that's like a really profound quote. And that's, it's from a yogi. It's from a Yogananda. So yeah, it's, um, I just like the way he has it laid out the sun. He has like the, so in the major arcana, turn your face to the sun and the shadows fall behind you. Beautiful, right? Like it's just so poetic. This book has a lot of beautiful quotes in it. Um, I like how it's laid out. It's in quite a large font. Like I said, he has a lot of spreads. He has overviews. He has um, the connection to astrology, to the Kabbalah. So anyway, I'm looking forward to, to getting into this more. I feel like I've already read quite a bit of it, but I think it's going to be a great reference book as well. So again, this is Tarot Unlocking the Arcana by Angelo Nasayos. I think that's how you say his last name. Yeah. That is the second book I'm reading. So another thing that I wanted to mention to you guys is... Um, you know, because for me, I've experimented with things like painting in the past. Like I do have paints and I get out my paints every now and then. And I love to write. So I've been writing. That was like a more of a new thing for me, getting into painting, exploring creativity through painting. Because uh, I was never really into like drawing and that kind of stuff when I was a kid. But I've always been into writing. I've written poetry. And so I've been de trying, to set, trying to set aside some time every week to dedicate to writing you know, as opposed to shopping or being on social media or something like that. Um, but another thing that I was inspired to, to reignite, um, one of my mentors uh, on YouTube, she's really into coloring. And when I first started, like heard her talk about it a couple years ago, I was like, uh, I'm not really sure if that would be my thing. But I tried it out about a year and a half ago. I think it was during COVID. And um, I bought my first like you know, non-kids coloring book and some pencils. And, um, and then I kind of left it aside. It was, it was a fun little project at the time that I kind of left it aside. And anyway, I pulled out my coloring book and I wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's a really great way to express creativity and also quiet the mind. Like it's very meditative. It's very calming. If you're feeling really stressed, it's kind of like when people knit and it's kind of like, I don't personally knit, but you know, it can be an anti-stress activity, right? So coloring, I feel like does the same thing for me. And for whatever reason, I just put it aside and I want to come back to it. So I don't know very much about it, but I know you can buy, um, coloring books online that have different themes. And this is one of the ones that I bought about a year and a half ago. It's called Enchanted Forest by Yuana or Joanna Basford and um you know everything from like trees obviously is going to be like a lot of nature-based trees there's there's animals in this one 
you know, like, but you can have a lot of fun with it. Like, I don't think there's any rules. That's the cool thing about it is like, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, so this is the box that I started and haven't finished yet, but like, it doesn't have to be like, I don't believe with coloring. There are any rules. You can use whatever colors you can use markers. You can use crayons. I have these just like basic Crayola, um, pencils. And then I just have like the washable like Crayola markers. So the, the thin ones I find work better, but you know, there's beautiful, there's like a dragonfly in here. And yeah, so if you're looking for a way to express your creativity and you're like, I'm not really sure where to start and you are also looking for something meditative and something to kind of quiet your mind and calm down, coloring could be a good option for you. So I wanted to share that. There's a few more. These are a little bit more complicated. <laughs> Look at this frog. Maybe I'll do this frog next. Oh my God, what a cutie. Yeah, I'll just show you a few more. But there's there's a bunch on Amazon. I just picked this one because it was recommended by my mentor. Ooh, I wanna do this lion. Look at that, that's really cool. Yeah. So anyway, this is Enchanted Forest. There's tons on Amazon. I'm sure you can get tons at your local bookstore as well. It's become a trend, I guess, in the past like five, 10 years. So yeah, so that is what I've been up to guys. Those are the books I'm reading. Oh yeah, one more thing I wanted to share is my new newest deck that is now become one of my favorite decks. And if you guys have watched my videos, you've probably seen that I did an unboxing of this deck about a month ago. And it is the Bianco Nero Tarot. I love this deck. So I was drawn to it because of the black and white. I wanted something very different to read with. Look at the Justice card. This is actually what made me buy the deck. I love this depiction of the Justice card. But anyway, if you guys haven't seen it, I'll show you a few of the images. There is just something about it. So it's based on the Rider Waite Smith system. It was created by, um, oh my gosh, I'm gonna butcher his name. Where is his name? Okay, I'll come back to it in a moment. But Bianco Nero, look at this King of Wands. Love that. So it's based on Rider Waite Smith, but I love It's a really simplistic version of the death of the death card. I love the nuances. I love his take on each image. There's a little bit of difference. Look at the backs too. It's so cool. The backs have the elements and roses. I'm obsessed with roses. I want to show you a couple of my favorite images, but yeah. Oh, I just even this judgment card. The simplicity of the black and white, the RWS artwork, if that's what you read or if you're new to tarot, I feel like this would be a great deck to learn with. Um, the muted colors, like the black and white allows me to access parts of my intuition that I feel like maybe with a more flashy deck, I wouldn't be able to. And what I mean by flashy is I'm not a big fan of when decks are really busy or there's a lot going on. I like simplicity. I like beautiful artwork, but even just that, look at this. Ooh, I, I really, yeah. I've been working with this deck every day since I got it. That's the justice card again. And, uh, ooh, cause this is my birth card. You guys can see it. It's up behind me as well above my piano. Look at this strength card. But yeah, you know, and I'm not saying go out and buy it. This isn't, this is just me sharing the experience that I'm having. And um, I've been reading, using this deck to read for myself. I don't think I've used it with clients yet, have I? No, I haven't. It's been my own personal, I've de been developing my own relationship. Ooh, I love this Empress. Yeah, anyway. If you're new to tarot or if you're looking for a deck that reads a little bit differently because of the black and white if you don't have a black and white this could be a cool deck to explore i love that sun okay so if you made it to the end thank you so much for watching guys it's always so great to connect with you um let me know what do you think of the uh, the vintage wisdom oracle 
Have you worked with Bianco Nero Tarot? What are your favorite decks that you're working with in January 2022? What are you reading? Have you tried coloring? I just love to hear from you guys. So let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you haven't already, check out the January 2022 Pick a Card reading. I just posted it a couple of days ago. I'll try to remember to link it below. I still have 2022 Outlook readings available on my Etsy shop as well. So if you need some insight and guidance, moving forward, a personal reading is a great way to um, just gain some insight for your year ahead and what you can focus on. So I'll put that down, that link down in the description below and um, also the link to my website. Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe. If you're enjoying these videos, hit the bell, the notification bell, so you're notified when I upload new content. And um, it's always such a pleasure to connect with you all. Sending you much love, many blessings, and a beautiful weekend. I'll see you all on here soon.